Hello there, my beloved Betties. I love folklore, and I also love fairies. That probably comes as no surprise. <laughs> so if I were to ask you to think of the most modern fairy character, who would come to mind? This? Or this? Nah. For me, it's this guy. What is your distress, madam? This is the gentleman with the thistle-down hair from Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, played here by Mark Warren. It's a fantastic miniseries based on one of my favourite books. Set during the Napoleonic Wars in the early 19th century, it primarily follows two magicians working to bring magic back to England. It's an amazing story, which I highly recommend checking out, whether on page or screen. But despite its period setting, and the pastiche of classic authors' styles, the links to the land of fairy are what made me turn my head. Warning, from this point on, there will be spoilers. The gentleman is the ruler of Lost Hope, a kingdom within fairy, who is summoned by Mr. Norrell to bring the recently deceased Lady Pole back to life. He accepts, but for a price. Half of her life will belong to him. Norrell blindingly accepts the bargain. However, instead of dying again prematurely, Lady Pole is whisked away every single night to join the gentleman at his revelries, causing her to become fatigued and waste away. In addition, she is placed under an enchantment which prevents her from telling anybody what is going on, leading to practically everyone around her believing she has gone mad. There was once a Christian named Julius Caesar who, who landed in England and was met by three gentlemen all named John Hollyshoes. So if you give me a, the, give me that was not what I meant to say. Okay. Where do I start? Forget magic wands. Forget wings. I haven't even gotten deep into the story of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. But even in that brief explanation, the gentleman is arguably the most accurate fairy character since Shakespeare. Traditionally, fairies have not been seen as evil per se, but they have egos to be reckoned with, and their actions can be devious, taking advantage of unclear situations and following whatever takes their fancy. But are they not wicked creatures? Is it not very dangerous to entrust yourself with such a disreputable companion? Oh, to be sure. Fairies are naturally full of mischief and exceedingly difficult to control. Were I to succeed, I should have to proceed with the greatest caution. The word fairy itself derives from the old French word meaning to enchant, and historically, it was used more as an adjective rather than a noun. It was only later that the term became interchangeable with a small elfin being. The first written record of fairies in England dates to the 13th century, and they were tricksters, with most of the folklore around them concerned with protection from their malice. They were usually depicted as tall and radiant, and very rarely with wings. Wings are actually quite a modern addition to their image. So with that in mind, let's take a closer look at how the gentleman ties into fairy folklore. First of all, let's start with his name, or rather, the lack of a name. Of you gentlemen taking what you want of me. Sorry, but I have my not. voice now, and I say, you are a bore, sir. An uncivilized, unsightly, filthy bore. With your tasteless clothes and with your hair like thistle down. Thistle down. This is actually the only time that his quote unquote name is used. The gentleman's true name not being revealed is a very traditional idea. It was believed that knowing the name of a being grants power over them, so speaking a fairy's name could force it to do your bidding. In addition, they are unable to lie, but are masters of twisting their words and manipulating gullible humans with empty promises. And, of course, we see Norrell make this exact mistake. Speaking of having power over something, in medieval times, it was believed that witches and sorcerers could possess familiars, spirits who would serve them and do their bidding. A few centuries later, when King James penned his book Demonology, he actually used the term fairies to refer to spirits which could consort, tell the future, and transport the people they served. This is echoed in the story too. I wish to secure myself a fairy servant. As for stealing innocent people away, the idea of changelings is pretty well known even today children and beautiful youngsters who are replaced with a fairy child so they can be taken into the fairy lands. 
But that's not where the legends stop. If there was a sudden death, it might very well be a case of fairy kidnapping, with the corpse actually being a wooden replacement made in the image of the person. And for a while, an explanation for tuberculosis, or consumption as it was then known, was that it was an enchantment placed upon young people, which forced them away from their bodies to dance at balls every night, causing them to waste away from lack of rest. Sound familiar? Lady Pole becomes distressed at the sound of bells, which serve to summon her every night. Even though in some cases bells could be used to dispel fairies, other sources mention that fairies who ride on horseback, such as fairy queens, have bells on their harnesses. A fitting idea for a fairy king, too. The idea of the land of fairy itself being divided into several various kingdoms rather than simply being ruled by a single monarch also goes back to the folklore. The fairies of Ireland were associated with several realms, such as the Pleasant Plain, the Fortress of Apples, and perhaps most famously, the Land of Youth, or Tir Nanog. Similarly, the gentleman mentions that Lost Hope is merely the finest of my mansions, and also mentions the kingdoms of Blue Castles and the City of Iron Angels as being under his dominion. I could honestly go on for hours about how cleverly crafted this character is. Of course, the gentleman isn't the only example of a mature fairy, as opposed to the popular modern version. There are others which allude to their darker and trickster side. Ones that come to mind for me can be found in Artemis Fowl, Terry Pratchett's Discworld, Neil Gaiman's work such as Stardust and the Sandman, The Spiderwick Chronicles, and even Labyrinth. But this one seems to be in a class all his own. The multitude of threads connecting him to so many aspects of folklore is just fascinating to me. I can only congratulate Susanna Clarke for creating such an interesting character, and Mark Warren for bringing him to life in such a fantastically accurate way. This explanation from Jonathan Strange sums it all up perfectly. Wicked, wicked! And then again, perhaps not so wicked after all, for what does he do but follow his nature? Okay, I've got to end with this clip. Why are you firing warlocks at me? Amazing. Okay, Batties, so that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I release new videos every single week. And don't forget to click the notification bell and that way you won't miss a single one. So I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!